examination to roll out distance learning programs. However, BECE and WASI candidates will be allowed to attend school to prepare for their examinations, but with the prescribed social distancing protocols. Thirdly, the government of Ghana's travel advisory issued earlier today should be observed as announced. Fourthly, businesses and other workplaces can continue to operate but should observe prescribed social distancing between patrons and staff. Fifthly, establishments such as supermarkets, shopping malls, restaurants, nightclubs, hotels and drinking spots should observe enhanced hygiene procedures by providing, amongst others, hand sanitizers, running water and soap for washing of hands. Sixthly, the Minister of Transport should work with the transport unions and private and public transport operators to ensure enhanced hygienic conditions in all vehicles and terminals by providing, amongst others, hand sanitizers, running water, and soap for washing of hands. And seventhly, the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development should coordinate with the Metropolitan, Municipal and District Assemblies measures to enhance conditions of hygiene in markets across the country. Additionally, as the experts conduct contact tracing, I appeal to all to cooperate with them to ensure that persons who have come into contact with positive cases are identified and supported. I've directed the Attorney General to submit immediately to Parliament emergency legislation in accordance with Article 21 4 C and D of the Constitution of the Republic to embody these measures. And I've further directed the Minister for Health to exercise his powers under Section 169 of the Public Health Act 2012, Act 851 by the immediate issuance of an executive instrument to govern the relevant profession. I call upon Parliament to support the executive in this national endeavor. As I said earlier, there's every need to observe prescribed social distancing and good personal hygiene to prevent community spread. We are determined to do whatever we can to prevent the spread of the virus and You may recall that on Wednesday, 12th March 2020, when I first spoke to you directly on this matter, I announced the first raft of enhanced measures taken in response to the pandemic. At the time, there had been no reported confirmed case of the coronavirus in Ghana. Since then, six confirmed cases have been announced, all of persons who recently traveled into the country. Advisories on how to manage the developments have also been announced by the Ministries of Health and Information. Public education is being intensified to ensure that citizens are well advised on preventive measures. Earlier today, Sunday, the 15th of March, 2020, I chaired a meeting of the Interministerial Committee on Coronavirus Response. After deliberations, I've decided, in the interest of public safety and the protection of our population, to review the public gathering advisories earlier announced as follows. Firstly, all public gatherings, including conferences, workshops, funerals, people on half festivals, coming here whatever. and there, you wouldn't want to add coronavirus to your headache to already overstretch the few hospital beds. So, for me, it means you need to take drastic actions not to even allow this to spread in the first place. Mm. And I think that it is a step in the right direction. Now, having said that, what about our borders? I mean, people go to and fro, and we often say that our borders, our borders actually are, are, are porous. Um, what about measures put in place there? Satisfied? 
partially. Uh, so for me, for instance, I was expecting that the, 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 the first step will have been to ban all countries with confirmed cases from coming to Ghana. Mm. This is what I expected the president to do much earlier because all the six cases we have are imported cases mm. and we did not put in place measures to quarantine people when they come to the country within 14 days to observe them until they develop symptoms and then you collect their samples partly this could be due to economic uh, reasons logistics availability whether you want to put them in a hotel comfort of people so we didn't do this and we we, we allowed people to come in and then we went for self-quarantine yourself and when you feel that you are observing symptoms then you come back and unfortunately some of them got uh, to the communities and then after four or five days they developed symptoms went to the hospital and now you have close to over 151 people to trace contact in a country where address systems don't work properly where you find them where do you see them and it's a difficult thing that you don't want to get to mm. so i think that if if the borders uh, were if you had to uh, close uh, the borders and contain your cases because if you don't follow up all these people you don't ensure that you pick their samples when they develop symptoms and and you don't contain them and they keep moving as they keep moving this thing spread mm. and if you also allow people to come in as you are dealing with the internal cases, people will still be traveling in and out, and they will be complicating your matter. Mm. So the border issues are, is a much of a concern, and those still traveling in mm. are much concern. For instance, I wasn't happy with the, with the, with the decision that less than 200 cases uh, we, we, will, we will let you quarantine. I'm not happy. The very first case in Ghana was the, the gentleman was from Turkey. From Turkey, yeah. Turkey has 18 cases as we speak. 18 cases so how did the man come in if you have 18 cases in your country and you manage to get into the country and then you develop symptoms then why do we want to use 200 cases so mm. I, i'm not fully satisfied, satisfied. Uh, do, do, doctor you know akosia jima like i said is the shanti regional metro health director and she's also right here with us at this point in time based on, on all the measures that has been put in place it doesn't call for a panic should it no it doesn't call for a panic we should all remain calm and observe the preventive measures that are taking place. These are things that will help us to prevent somebody from getting it. And the education must go out well. There are also wrong messages going out so that people don't take their hand washing that you are preaching seriously, which is what will prevent you from getting it. And the respiratory etiquette we are talking about that when you are coughing or sneezing, um, use a tissue, dispose of it, or cough into your elbow and use hand sanitizer and the hand washing. These are things that will prevent us from getting it, even if somebody has it. If you're able to observe these things, it will protect all of us from getting it. It's not a time for panic. The information, people have been recovered from it. So it's not like if you get coronavirus, that's a death sentence. I mean, that is what is even creating the more panic that people think that once you get coronavirus, that means you are going to die. And that is not the case. So we should all get the right information, taking the necessary precautionary, uh, precautionary measures so that we don't get the disease. These are things that we are preaching in. And all other institutions, the media should also help us send the right information. Who should not be ready to send out information when it has not been confirmed? Otherwise, it also creates more rumors. People think people are, people are holding on to information and creating more panic. So these are things that we should all get the right information and put in place the right interventions. Those coming into, if you are supposed to self quarantine, do that to protect your brother and your sister. That is what we are preaching from the beginning. That if you come in from other country, our bodies are supposed to screen, and we have an incubation period for the disease from one to two weeks. Some might even say you can even extend beyond that. So you make sure that when you take your temperature at the border, you might not have the temperature then, you might not have the fever, but you might develop it a day or two later then you must know the measure to take in place. Also, don't start going around attending social gatherings when you're coming from such places. These are messages we should make sure it goes around because right now we have, we have six confirmed cases and their contacts are what we are now following. So everybody should make sure they're taking the necessary I just want to be sure that I heard you right. So if you're coming from a country where they have coronavirus, once you enter, let's do our borders, for example, when you, once you come in and you, you, your temperature is taken and you are normal, Stay home for two weeks. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's what you're saying. Don't go out yet. Even though no. you're, you're not showing signs of symptoms yes, or don't anything. Go out yet. Let's stay home for two weeks. Yes. Wow. All right. So, um, having, having said this, I mean, I have 
seen. I mean, let me even come in with this question first. You were talking about the contact tracing. Here we are. Unfortunately for us, we have had one confer confirmed case in the Ashanti region. And we're told that contact tracing has led to, what, 30 people? that the, the Yes, that's con contacts. Con con contacts. How, how well are we doing with, with, with the contact tracing such that we are assured that, let's say, any person that she came into contact with has been identified or seen? Mm -hmm. So this is where we need everybody, those confirmed cases, to also be good and truthful to us because it's collaboration. So if I come to you, you have to be able to list all the people you've come to contact with me. If you miss out your other brother, you don't inform me, we might not trace that person. But if that person also knows I've come into contact with maybe Michael and it's a confirmed case, then I should also come forward that I met Michael here, I had I did a handshake, I did this, so I'm bringing myself in to be investigated. I'm staying at home for two weeks to observe that whether I have a develop a fever or I start coughing or sneezing, then I bring myself in. These are things that we are doing. What but if the person went to church or the person was in a public transport, let's say a VIP bus from one to the other, how would you know that this is the person we're talking about? How can you come, say, okay, here I am because I was with this person. How do we do this? So that means the bus and things that they went should meet public. So if they went through VIP bus or this, then all these things, and that is creates a long list. Yeah. That's why I'm happy now that the president says social gatherings should cut down, should cut down, because tracing contacts. If the person attended a mass gathering like that, is going to be very, very difficult to get everybody. And but you also need to get in close about a meter or two with that person for you to get the infection. If he coughs or sneezes on you, for you to be exposed, that is another thing. So mass gathering is important, but it should be in a close perimeter of a, a meter or more, or at about two, that's the most. I mean, because you say you should be away from anybody who is sick, mm. about a meter mm. or two mm. from the person. Mm. So those people might be away, but those closer are the people we have to get and investigate them to make sure they don't not have to, the Not to cause any pa panic, you know, uh, situation, but we're talking about coughing, and you and I know that in Ghana, many of us don't follow the coughing etiquettes. And again, we spit anyhow. We do all manner of things that, you know, could create problems for us. I've seen in other countries where they are disinfecting places, buses, a whole city town, hotels and stuff like that. Looking at the fact that we don't uh, uh, adhere to correct, you know, coughing etiquettes and we're spitting and this, this virus we're told can be in the atmosphere for like, what, three hours or a little uh, beyond three hours. Shouldn't we be spraying our environment? Shouldn't we be doing something like this? To the extreme, we can we can get there. But would you, would you advise that we do that now? No, now I don't think we should, we should do that. Mean? Yes. Losing being the reason be that we have six confirmed cases, and we are not picking a lot now. I mean, they're close. It depends on how the numbers you have now who who are confirmed cases. So every stage and the interventions we put in. So now we see you have six cases, and you see that the contacts are a lot. So let's stop social gatherings. Let's let students stay at home. These are good. Our borders too. They are monitoring it closely because these are measures we are taking in place. So every stage and what they take. So maybe tomorrow we might change what you want to do or in a week's time. So it's a plan thing. But some countries were overwhelmed when they relaxed, like South Korea, even China. So do we have to wait and say, okay, we want to have more confirmed cases before we, we take such actions? Wouldn't it be so each action is informed by um, their interventions. So each action and what at whatever stage you should have a scientific reason for whatever you are doing. Mm. So if you say you don't have a case and you are doing lockdown, you want to stay at home, that is you. That means nobody comes in, nobody comes in. So each stage and what you decide what you want to do. So those experts will sit down, even with these interventions, some are the school children at home, these are things people are happy about it that we are protecting the school children, which is good. So these are things at each stage we look at the, the situation and decide appropriately what to do. Dr. Michael, is it too early to call? Well, I agree perfectly with what she said. It's too early to call now. And um, as she said, we, we, we shouldn't be in a state of panic. These are six imported cases. There are, there are levels of transmission. What we should fear most is community transmission. What we haven't gotten there yet. Mm. When we get to the point where somebody who has not had or traveled out there has not come into contact with anybody who has come from a country which is affected and the person presents with a normal flu or pneumonia and gets test positive it's a worry that is what the u.s uh, current case started so community transmission we are not yet there and when we are not at the level of community transmission you wouldn't want to uh, undertake uh, these procedures of spraying and then the massive cleaning, spraying and then cleaning. I don't think we mm. are there yet. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Now, uh, what can you tell us about this um, um, woman, you know, who 
to you guys t uh, screened and her results turned out to be positive? Yeah, so um, what we know is that somewhere on Friday in the evening, we got a call uh, that a woman is having symptoms suggestive of uh, falls into the cl uh, criteria that has been defined by the Ghana Health Service. So her sample was brought to KCCR, and as a Saturday in the dawn, the results was uh, sent to uh, the public health director by the KCCR scientific director. And then uh, there were some other follow-ups that were done, and uh, th this is what the president announced. And currently, as we speak, uh, <coughs> sample containers, they need tubes and everything has been made available to Anglo Golda Shanti, mm. so that the 30 people that they are following up, if anybody develops symptoms, they quickly will, will, will have to collect the sample. And we are always in touch with them, that as soon as they see any signs and symptoms, once they get at the sample within the next four hours to six hours we'll get them the results and follow up so we are we are always in touch with them well is she is she stable is she in an isolated center doctor uh, <laughs> what can you tell us yeah from the reports we have she's stable and they have um, isolated her, so she's stable. She's stable, and yeah. she's in, in an isolation center. Okay, that's good to know. But Dr. Michael, also, are you surprised that, um, you know, Dr. Jima here says she doesn't see anything wrong with it, but the fact that um, these people have made their way into our country without we detecting it till later, is it not a source of worry? Uh, to me, uh, it's a source of worry, mm -hmm. and uh, it also talks about our, our fragile systems and as a lower income, uh, middle income country, because as I said earlier, Look at the six cases we have. The average period from showing of symptoms to reporting to the hospital is about four to five days. Mm. The case in Oboasi, if you calculate from the time the person developed symptoms to reporting to the hospital, was about seven days. Mm. So as the number of days increases between symptoms, development, and reporting to the hospital, the number of contacts also increases. So she had 30 contacts because... At the time she developed symptoms, she was, I believe, moving and engaging in other functionaries and activities. And that is why you had the 30. And if she had delayed a bit, she would have expanded the number of contact groups around her, which will make it more and more difficult. So this is why uh, I, I, I thought earlier that once you come in, if we had observed them within 14 days, we will have picked up all this. They will have just maybe limited to Accra without flying into a place like Oboise and then getting this done. And as she said, you see, we are, we are, we are, the strategy that we are operating with is based on people becoming more truthful, uh, more patriotic and cooperative. This is, this is the strategy we are adopting. Mm. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's a bit dicey. You know, the average Ghanaian, if you tell the person that sit home and then because you have this school uh, quarantine yourself the next person the person will tell you that what will i eat people have to go out almost every day work and, <coughs> and, and eat so as much as you want to prescribe this you want to also put in some policies do you want to give them some incentives in singapore for instance when they got to the level of community enhanced surveillance what they did was that for those that were told to stay home they were giving them some money mm. so people found an incentive that yes if they are a contact to people let them stay home and then they will receive some daily allowance or some wages so that they will be comfortable it's a bit difficult to tell people that stay home love your country don't expose people and he's hungry who will feed the person it's a similar situation like the Ebola, <coughs> where people were quarantined in large numbers in yards, and they were not, they, were, they couldn't get food. So they broke out of the quarantine and went for their food, and they exposed more people. So I think that's why I said, yes, it's good to bring up some of these, but the practicality on the ground, mm. we, we have to deal with this. And if we don't deal with this, you may be observing them, but they will keep moving, and you don't have money to, 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 to help them. We're, we're streaming live also on Facebook on LUV 99.5, and uh, we're showing you some things that some people in other countries are doing, things measures that they're putting in place to ensure safety from disinfect 
still saying that he's doing and all that. We'd like to hear from you uh, when we activate the phone lines. But as we watch the video, we also have played back um, the president's address to the country, to the nation yesterday. That took place at 10 p.m. Again, we're playing it back on Facebook. If you missed it, let's hear from you. And then you can you can drop your comments you know, below the video. Let's, let's have your take on all that is happening and all the measures that has been put in place so far. You can also send us your voice notes to 554 031192 0554 031192 Now, um, Dr. Uh, Akusejima, now the kids are at home, and you and I know how some children behave, even especially boys. Once they have a bit of freedom and parents are out of the home, they would go anywhere and do all manner of things. Is closing of our schools enough, or there are other things that we need to do for them and with them for them to know that their personal safety is key and that they need to follow some protocols? <coughs> Thank you. So closing the schools is key, mm. but parents and guardians also have a responsibility now. So the kids must understand why they are at home. Some of them are happy. It's like a holiday for them. They'll be sitting down watching TV, but they should understand that it's because of coronavirus or COVID-19. And they are, they are hand washing, they are caught respiratory etiquette, and also stay not going out to garden to say we are going to organize a football match or all our friends should come together. These are things they should understand. And they should stay at home. And the pa parents should also engage them, give them some work to do. I mean, because they'll be, be at home for a period, and otherwise they also get bored and be mischievous. So we get them some work, things to do, as maybe at school, some writing, some work to do, engage them. Have time for maybe some TV, not too much television anyway, but things to engage them, but they should understand mm. why they are too many, not to call their friends together mm. as we don't want them to come together. Mm. I mean, otherwise the essence will be defeated. Uh -huh. So these are things the kids should also understand. The parents should also find me. I know that parents are also those who as well are working, are wondering how their kids also they are going to take a boost. So everyone should put in some measures to make sure we're able to keep our kids at home and safe. Oh, so that's the essence of what Okay, so I'll, I'll come back to you shortly, but let's go into the phone lines and engage with Erastus Asai Bunko, um, who's been around, and um, he will share with us what he's been able to gather. He, I'm told right now, is at the KNUSC. Erastus, good morning. Good morning, David. And how are you doing? I'm good. Are you staying safe out there? Uh, come again. Are you staying safe out there? <laughs> Of course, uh, we always stay safe. Good, <laughs> good, good. So I know you are clear here. So what can you share with us this morning as to what the situation is like there? Because we know that starting today, uh, they are supposed uh, to close. What is the situation like? Well, the uh, road leading to the university itself looks deserted. Um, I'm currently at the faculty area, and the place looks almost like a cemetery. Um, I'm seeing pockets of uh, students who are either standing and chatting or something. I've seen some uh, two uh, students here. Uh, let me just find out. Good morning. Are you students? I just wanted to check. Are you here for lecture? Please. Why are you not having lectures today? I'm in high school. Oh, okay. 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 And we had a message that the president has cancelled all the children, including our students coming to class. So you're just doing your own thing? Actually, I'm going for some things, so I'm not just doing my own thing. I'm just kidding. going back home until the ban is over? For now, I'm not sure. Well, um, so that's one student. Another student is here. Why is it I come to collect my things from school and uh, get them back home. So you're going home today? Yeah, in my hostel where I stay. I might not go home. Yeah. The president is talking about a uh, month. Are you going to stay on campus? Yeah, I have to stay on campus because uh, I'm not a Ghanaian and uh, I have nowhere to go, so I just have to stay in my hotel. And Which nationality is that? He's a uh, Kenyan. Okay. We don't have lectures this month. No, we don't have. This week we're supposed to have exams, but uh, we're not going to have them. Yeah. David, uh, that's the situation here. Uh, these are uh, two students who are, I find, at the faculty area. Aside that, uh, there's nobody here. The place is deserted. Um, the various halls are also deserted. People are staying indoors. And so, uh, as we speak, the, the, the whole place 
has been deserted per the president's advice. Okay. Rashis, thank you very much for the update. And I'm sure that during the day we shall be bringing more to our listeners on this very uh, directive as uh, presented to the nation by the president. Now, unfortunately, Dr. You know, Michael Ozu, we're told that the uh, prices of hand sanitizers have gone up. And again, unfortunately, even in some places, people cannot even get some to buy. Now, if we're saying that we should keep washing our hands and wash them properly and use hand sanitizers, especially even in public transports and stuff like that, what should we be doing under circumstance? So, um, one of the tools that WHO has been preaching for is you need a country solidarity mm. to fight against the disease. Support, yeah. I think that people are still not not aware it's like we are we are in a war i mean this is what other countries did fighting disease is like being at the war front where you hold your hands mm. together and fight it together this is not the time to make profit and mm. this is not the time to uh, cheat and think that you want to make all the money you want to make it's about lives it would be nice even to give so, it out for free mm. of course this is what I, the last time i tried called on the pharmaceutical industries they are able to manufacture some of these hand sanitizers and either sell them at subsidized uh, um, or make it available for as many as possible. I think that this is what we must be doing. So for the many industries we have which have the capacity to produce, they should produce as many as we need and make it available because it's, it's about everybody. Because if we limit this to the few business people and as Ghanaian as you know people are, they are going to put all of us in trouble because the more you deny people of these things the more it becomes difficult for them to adhere to those protocols so you are preaching the protocols but what you need to do that is not available mm. and like a case in china i believe you watch some of the videos where people manufactured masks and deposited it for others to use mm. they didn't charge it mm. people manufactured sanitizers and just gave them for free I was telling you of an example where you even expect that the rich men in Ghana, the, the banks and the CEO and many companies should devote money that should yeah, go yeah. into manufacturing of these things mm -hmm. and make it available. Hmm. This is the only, only, only way to show you love a country and you are more patriotic. This is not the time to hoard money and make profit and, and then look your brother in the eye and charge him several months. What do you want the money for? So I, I think that uh, the media should be able to join this call uh, for us to uh, help our people understand the problems that uh, is coming is, is coming to us. Mm. All right. So last week you showed us how to you know create our own hand sanitizer by using some seventy percent of um, alcohol yeah. and then uh, thirty percent water. Yeah. Now for those of you who are you know listening to us and watching us on Facebook right now, we also want to share something with you because we also told that most masks. You know are running out and they're running out fast and so we, sh we have a video that will show you how to easily and simply you know um, um, put together um, um, a moose mask we're going to show you how, how simple and how easy it is to put together a moose mask and that is also going to be on our, our platform that is on LUV 99.5 in a bit and uh, you can reach out and, and watch it for yourself but uh, the education itself, um, Dr. Jima, do you think that is going down well? People are taking the education and information we're sharing serious enough. Now, I'm asking this because even at church yesterday, people were asked to shake hands and they were shaking hands. People were hugging in the church that I attended. Um, I, 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 when, 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 when you listen to uh, some of the things that we have heard around in terms of what happened in churches, it looks as if the, the information is not really going down well. The education is not really going down well enough. What, 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 what do you think? you know we can do to ensure more safety out there for people to take it more serious I think we should go on <clears throat> with the education we should go on and intensify it some churches heard it I think some did not hear it or some even sometimes even forget sometimes they put they push out their hands to come in and if the other person doesn't remember that there's no handshake mm. then they take their hand back these are things we've done over time and changing I mean asking people to change is not so easy but we should still continue to preach the message or still continue to educate people. And those of you, if you're around somebody and he's doing it, you also have to start the education. So we are all ambassadors of the education. Some hear it and it's like, oh, I think it's one of those things. But this one is a, it's a global thing. Everywhere, if you watch all the big, all the, the news stations and others internationally, everybody is talking about mm. it and it's going on everywhere. So the education should still be continued. I mean, it's not gone down well. We still need to talk about it and educate people. You are the regional uh, Metro Health Director. What plans has you know, your outfit put in place to ensure safety, more safety out there? What plans? 
So education is what we are still on. Mm. Education and the health, what the health facilities are supposed to do. Those um, protocols things have also been um, disseminated down to them. And these are things we also call us to the media and um, to the media front to also preach it. These are things we've been doing. And the regional health directors also hold press conferences with the media, also to educate and share with them what they are doing. And these are things all of us together should make sure we preach it and people get to know it. Because the community is a public health issue. Mm. It's not just about health facilities. It's about the community. It's about everybody. So all organizations, the security, um, I mean, industries, everywhere. As we're talking about the hand sanitizers and others, all these are needed. The logistics we need to work with in these um, times are also needed. Yep. And the corporate um, institutions should also support, mm. I mean, with donations and others. Because these are times that we need a lot of logistics. Because if the numbers increases, we need a lot of protective clothes, mm. of hand sanitizers, the f- a face mask we are talking about. But the face mask is really for those who are having the respiratory systems. We should know when to use it. Mm. It's not everybody. It's everybody wearing a mask, even driving mm. in their cars. But, Doc, forgive me, but if, if the thing is in the atmosphere, and I'm the really... I'm a really respiratory really droplet. Mm-hmm. We should get that one. It's mm-hmm. not an airborne... Yes, but, but again, we're told that if somebody coughs, it stays in the, in the, in the uh, air... So the droplet yeah. that you uh, have. Uh-huh. So, so if I want to protect myself from... So my the person right. who is coughing, ideally, if that person wears it, okay. it will reduce the number of the droplet that comes out. Okay. If you are not coughing, but I think you are protected, and you'll be using your hands to touch, mm. your unclean hands to touch your mm. face, or even touch the mask. Yeah. These can even let you get infected. Okay. So these are things we need to preach. So it's not just putting on a face mask. You might have a wrong impression that, oh, I'm safe, so I might not wash my hands. Or use the hand sanitizer. Okay. And these are things we should make sure they get. One of the things that was mentioned in, in, in the president's delivery, you know, yesterday has to do with hygiene, personal hygiene, you know, at our trotro stations, bus terminals and all that. Now I recall vividly that Dr. Ozu, you know, Michael Ozu, last week you mentioned that even uh, uh, drivers or transport owners should make available tissues <laughs> and hand sanitizers. Now they'll tell you that it's going to come at a cost and they're not prepared to bear, uh, to bear that cost. In as much as this call has come through from the president, how do we ensure, how do we make it possible for these hand sanitizers and for these tissues to be made available? Because I think that it would be nice if maybe the treacherous mate will clean or disinfect the bus before we even board it. Isn't that something we need to be considering? Yeah, so we need to begin to uh, practice this culture uh, because you can't predict the epidemic wave of these things hmm. if you put in good measures in place and it, it comes to the level where you are exposed then you are sure that you'll be able to protect yourself so hmm. uh, we mentioned this the other time but as i said uh, you also need support from uh, various institutions uh, when people become recalcitrant you also need some laws and the security forces must begin to operate it should get to the point where you don't only appeal to the conscience of people in things like this because if you tell people that they can do it when they feel like doing it, the if they don't do it, they expose everybody. Mm. And you don't want to get there where people's behavior and people's own way, the way people don't even so believe. So you want the police or security to come in to enforce this? At the point. At what point? The, when the is president, that the point? The, the president has made pronouncements. Mm. How is it going to be enforced? So, so if there are no laws in place, and I know there is a public health act which allows the, the minister of health to be able to execute some powers within this so mm. you will expect that once these things have been said you you need enforcement and enforcement can best be done by our security agency so if you have the police standing at the roadside mm. and then they tell you that look do, do you have a piece of tissue in your car do you even have some hand sanitizers you, you need to um, the ones <laughs> they start doing that people do yeah. but, but the other thing is that uh, david the other thing is that once you are telling them to do this, then you should also begin to also offer some form of budgets. For instance, if the various uh, regions, uh, if you could have government have some hand sanitizers in huge numbers, huge numbers, and then give I, I some to the transport organizations that this is what government is going to give to you. Mm. Use some uh, for your activities, at least for a don't start. Take it, don't take it home. Use it for the public. Of course, it, it's going to help. We need to protect ourselves. It, it, it's ourselves. going to help. Do- Doctor, you are the better health director. You, you are due to this. Yeah, if, have, have, you, have you pushed put it before government? 
I can't speak to that whether they've pushed it or not, but these are things, calls that have started coming. So mm. I believe everybody will hear, and those even producing it, the pharmaceutical companies will also hear, mm. and see the need for all of us to work together to mm. get the needed logistics at the various points. Mm. Everybody also get their own personal hand sanitizers, yeah. the vehicles, the transport others also get these in place, and the tissues, and this will go a long way. All right, so 03220 You can give us a call. Uh, what do you make of the directive given by the president yesterday when he, you know, uh, addressed the nation? What do you make of the measures he's put in place? Um, as a parent, um, what, what information have you given to your children? Have you informed them well enough as you leave home for them to know what they should be doing or should not be doing? You can also call us on 0554-031192. You can call that number too. 0554-031192. That's another number you can reach us on. Christoph, good morning. Hey, good morning. Um, you remember Friday I was telling you that the big thing is here with us, but they are not the president. Fellow Ghanaians, I've come into your homes again this evening to provide an update as I promised on the measures taken by government to combat the coronavirus pandemic. You may recall that on Wednesday, 12th March 2020, when I first spoke to you directly on this matter, I announced the first raft of enhanced measures taken in response to the pandemic. At the time, there had been no reported confirmed case of the coronavirus in Ghana. Since then, six confirmed cases have been announced, all of persons who recently traveled into the country. Advisories on how to manage the developments have also been announced by the ministries of health and information. Public education is being intensified to ensure that citizens are well advised on preventive measures. Earlier today, Sunday, the 15th of March, 2020, I chaired a meeting of the Interministerial Committee on Coronavirus Response. After deliberations, I've decided, in the interest of public safety and the protection of our population, to review the public gathering advisories earlier announced as follows. Firstly, all public gatherings, including conferences, workshops, funerals, festivals, political rallies, sporting events, and religious events such as services in churches and mosques, have been suspended for the next four weeks. Private burials are permitted, but with limited numbers, not exceeding 25 in attendance. Secondly, all universities, senior high schools, and basic schools, i.e. public and private schools, will be closed Monday, 16th of March, 2020, till further notice. The Minister of Education, in collaboration with the Minister of Communication, has been tasked to roll out distance learning programs. However, BECE, and WASI candidates will be allowed to attend school to prepare for their examinations, but with the prescribed social distancing protocols. Thirdly, the Government of Ghana's Travel Advisory, issued earlier today, should be observed as announced. Fourthly, businesses and other workplaces can continue to operate but should observe prescribed social distancing between patrons and staff. Fifthly, establishments such as supermarkets, shopping malls, restaurants, nightclubs, hotels and drinking spots should observe enhanced hygiene procedures by providing, amongst others, hand sanitizers, running water and soap for washing of hands. Sixthly, the Minister of Transport should work with the transport unions and private and public transport operators to ensure enhanced hygienic conditions in all vehicles and terminals. 
by providing amongst others hand sanitizers, running water, and soap for washing of hands. And seventhly, the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development should coordinate with the Metropolitan, Municipal, and District Assemblies measures to enhance conditions of hygiene in markets across the country. Additionally, as the experts conduct contact tracing, I appeal to all to cooperate with them to ensure that persons who have come into contact with positive cases are identified and supported. I've directed the Attorney General to submit immediately to Parliament emergency legislation in accordance with Article 21 4 C and D of the Constitution of the Republic to embody these measures. And I've further directed the Minister for Health to exercise his powers under Section 169 of the Public Health Act 2012, Act 851, by the immediate issuance of an executive instrument to govern the relevant profession. I call upon Parliament to support the executive in this national endeavor. As I said earlier, there's every need to observe prescribed social distancing and good personal hygiene to prevent community spread. We are determined to do whatever we can to prevent the spread of the virus and protect the population. All the measures that have been announced will be subject to constant review and enhancement if necessary. Fellow Ghanaians, these are not ordinary times.
is because it is very dangerous. Let us abide by what the president said and stay away from the virus. Hi to Reverend Samuel K. Mainzer of Crow from CAC. Uh, Benjamin A. Williams says frequent monitoring should be done to assess whether the government advice is being you know, adhered to. I agree with you on that very one. And that's why he's, uh, you know, de 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 dedicated some ministries to manage some of these things mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. Kwame Mafu says, um, Sir Kwame from Barikese, why should government put ban on churches and leave nightclubs and other gatherings? <laughs> Greetings to Deborah Ahin and Juliana Samoa. Um, Barrison Maxwell Rask City says, uh, is this a paperwork? I mean, that mask uh, making being shown. What's well, so paperwork? You just take a tissue and you can form a, a nose mask out of it. Hand sanitizers are running out on the market. Uh, most masks are running out uh, short on, on the market. So we are finding ways, innovative ways, to stay healthy and to protect ourselves from the coronavirus. Now, Dr. Michael Ousu, a lady was asking about why are we not being proactive, why are we being reactive? And that question I asked, you know. Yes, uh, David. Uh, you know, when, when this whole thing started, uh, we were trying to discuss why we cannot rather be proactive in mm. Uh, preventing people from the affected countries from coming to Ghana in the first place. Yeah. For me, I think this is what we should have done. Mm. If we had prevented those people from coming, or at least had quarantined them for 14 days under strict observation, we wouldn't have these imported cases in Ghana. So mm. I, I agree, I agree, agree on that. But I think that what the president has, has said now is a good start for us. And to me, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's at a high level. Okay. And once we are able to implement these things and ensure that people abide by, by these measures, I think that it is going to save, save, save us. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Michael Owusu. Always grateful to have you with us. Dr. Akosia Jima is the Shanti Regional Metro Health Director. Doc, let's hear you. Any final words? Okay, so the final words, I think someone um, said hand washing. That mm. is the basic thing we should all be going under running water, mm -hmm. at least 20 seconds. And if you haven't had hand sanitizer, also we use it. If you are coughing, you cover your mouth and your nose with a tissue and you dispose of the tissue or you cough into your inner elbow. These are things that we should all do to make sure we stay safe. Mm. And if you are contacting others, please come out and let us screen you. If you are supposed to self-quarantine, let's all be patriotic and do it to save your brother and your sister. And all the other um, agencies should come on board to support us. It's everybody. It's all collective. We are all working together to save everybody mm. in this issue. And we should not panic. Okay. We should not panic. But make sure we put in all the necessary preventive and take them seriously. Mm. Let's the self-quarantine, self -quarantine, if I uh, have a family, for example, I'm self-quarantining, how, how should my family behave around me? What should they be doing around me? So you are not supposed to get into close. You should be at least a meter or two away from them. That is what we mean. I mm. mean, if you have symptoms, then you have to report. We take your sample. If you are that, we have to. We will take you from there mm. and manage you appropriately. Okay. So these are things to... We are talking about that to the self quarantine. Okay. Don't get close to them. Mm. I mean, it should be a meter away. So, yeah. if, they, if for example, they want to give you food, they should open the door and push your food. Oh, the one beside just like you stretch forth your hand and put it. Yes. So, two okay. meters is what we're talking about. Yes. yes. Doc, are we well resourced? I mean, we heard last week the president talk about $100 million. Have we had our fair share? Have we put measures in place well enough? So, um, these monies have been mentioned, and I think the various. Um, directorates will be given their share mm. for them to also manage appropriately. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm grateful. Mm. Dr. Akosia Jima, Ashanti Regional Metro Health Director, and to you, Dr. Michael Ousu, lecturer and researcher with the Department of Medical Diagnostics, KCCR, KMUST, and also director of the Center for Health System Strengthening. Thank you very much for your time. We are indeed grateful. Thank you. Thank you, very you very there's much. more coming up our way on this uh, coronavirus conversation. We're not going to stop talking now because, like you've heard my two panels say, what we need more now is education, education, education. I don't know how pastors are taking this ban on church activities right now. Maybe we need to get some pastors in and have a conversation for them to tell us how they feel about it. But I'd like to say a very big thank you to Nanaya Ojima, to um, Jim Agla, uh, to Saeed Ali Yakub, to all the team members, Erasmus Sassari, Donko, and DJ Apuzo. This has been another edition of Love in the Morning, right here on Love 99.5. Stay with us.
fellow Ghanaians, I've come into your homes again this evening to provide an update, as I promised, on the measures taken by government to combat the coronavirus pandemic. You may recall that on Wednesday, 12th March 2020, when I first spoke to you directly on this matter, I announced the first raft of enhanced measures taken in response to the pandemic. At the time, there had been no reported confirmed case of the coronavirus in Ghana. Since then, six confirmed cases have been announced, all of persons who recently traveled into the country. Advisories on how to manage the developments have also been announced by the Ministries of Health and Information. Public education is being intensified to ensure that citizens are well advised on preventive measures. Earlier today, Sunday, the 15th of March, 2020, I chaired a meeting of the Interministerial Committee on Coronavirus Response. After deliberations, I've decided in the interest of public safety and the protection of our population, to review the public gathering advisories earlier announced as follows. Firstly, all public gatherings, including conferences, workshops, funerals, festivals, political rallies, sporting events, and religious events such as services in churches and mosques, have been suspended for the next four weeks. Private burials are permitted, but with limited numbers, not exceeding 25 in attendance. Secondly, all universities, senior high schools, and basic schools, i.e. public and private schools, will be closed Monday, 16th of March, 2020, till further notice. The Minister of Education, in collaboration with the Minister of Communication, has been tasked to roll out distance learning programs. However, BECE and WASI candidates will be allowed to attend school to prepare for their examinations, but with the prescribed social distancing protocols. Thirdly, the Government of Ghana's Travel Advisory, issued earlier today, should be observed as announced. Fourthly, Businesses and other workplaces can continue to operate, but should observe prescribed social distancing between patrons and staff. Fifthly, establishments such as supermarkets, shopping malls, restaurants, nightclubs, hotels and drinking spots should observe enhanced hygiene procedures by providing, amongst others, hand sanitizers, running water and soap, for washing of hands. Sixthly, the Minister of Transport should work with the transport unions and private and public transport operators to ensure enhanced hygienic conditions in all vehicles and terminals by providing, amongst others, hand sanitizers, running water, and soap for washing of hands. And seventhly, the Minister of Local Government and Rural Development should coordinate with the Metropolitan, Municipal and District Assemblies measures to enhance conditions of hygiene in markets across the country. Additionally, as the experts conduct contact tracing, I appeal to all to cooperate with them to ensure that persons who have come into contact with positive cases are identified and supported. I've directed the Attorney General to submit immediately to Parliament emergency legislation in accordance with Article 21, 4 C and D of the Constitution of the Republic to embody these measures. And I've further directed the Minister for Health to exercise his powers under Section 169 of the Public Health Act 2012, Act 851, by the immediate issuance of an executive instrument 
to govern the relevant profess. I call upon Parliament to support the executive in this national endeavor. As I said earlier, there's every need to observe prescribed social distancing and good personal hygiene to prevent community spread. We are determined to do whatever we can to prevent the spread of the virus and protect the population. All the measures that have been announced will be subject to constant review and enhancement if necessary. Fellow Ghanaians, these are not ordinary times. So let us all put our shoulders to the wheel. And I'm confident that together, by the grace of God, we shall overcome this challenge. May God bless us all and our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention.